Good day and welcome to our unboxing and configuration and demonstration and therefore review of the Terraza W5 Pro, which I believe to be the same as the T5 Pro. I believe that's a regional difference, uh, so the W and the T, I don't, I don't believe are physical differences. I think that they are just regional differences. And um, when you, you look at this, this compute stick just plugs into an HDMI port on your TV or on your screen of whatever description that may be. And uh, you might think, wow, that's really innovative of this company Terraza. Well, uh, per perhaps, but it's part of a larger uh, set from Intel uh, called uh, Compute Stick. And the Compute Stick's been out for a few years. Uh, this is as cheap as I could find. This comes with a full version of Windows 10 Professional. It is a 64 gig Intel Atom uh, complete PC on a stick. Now let's get to opening this up and see what's inside. I have not opened one of these up uh, before, so we're gonna do this together. The only thing I've noticed here is in the box, it has a product seal, so I'm just gonna cut that. You, of course, could just tear it. Uh, and I guess just before we do that, let's just flip it around in case there's something here you're interested in looking at. Yeah, nothing there, right? So just that. Okay, so let's flip it over. There we go. There is the compute stick. So let's get to this first, because this is what everybody wants to see. There we go. So it's piano black, has a little sticker, a little cover on it, which we'll just pull off. Uh, on the sides, USB 3, USB 2, power. Uh, that is uh, your power switch. And over here is uh, for a card. Uh, I believe this is 64 gig, but I understand that you can put up to a terabyte uh, of expansion into it. I'm not positive of that. Uh, I'll have it uh, up on the screen what the actual number is, but at any rate, that's what I believe it to be. Okay, and uh, that's your HDMI port. So nothing too exciting there. I'm going to put that back on. Let's get into the rest of the box. So I'll put that down there. And let's just start pulling this apart. So here, uh, let's see, we have power supply, which if you didn't catch it in the description a moment ago, is just a type C. So that, uh, oh, it's not type C, I thought it was. Isn't that interesting? Anyway, it is USB. There we go, just plugs in there and you're on your way. So I'm going to uh, put that down. Let's put this, uh, put this back. Uh, and what is this? This is a, oh, an adapter, wonderful. There we go, so that is an extender for HDMI. So you can use this to uh, plug in, wonderful. And next is the, well, let's just finish off with this packaging. There's nothing else in the packaging, so let's just get rid of it. So let's put that there, let's get this off, pop that there, and then we'll just flip through the packaging here very quickly, or the instructions very quickly to see what's here. Okay, so mini PC, make sure. Getting started guide. We're going to go do this so we can flip through this quite quickly. Uh, I have a tendency to intentionally not read instructions. So now we're into a different language and so we're going to stop. All right, so that's that. Uh, I don't like to read instructions, not because I'm stupid, but because I find that uh, I make uh, interesting discoveries when I try to figure things out by myself. So what I'm going to do is plug this into a machine, uh, into a monitor, I should say, and I'm going to plug in a USB keyboard and mouse, and then we are going to um, plow our way through it. If I get stuck, I will come back and look at the instructions, but I don't want to do that because, again, I want to figure it out. Okay, that didn't work. Let's try the HDMI extender and the off chance it's not quite fitting in because it is a bit loose. So I'm gonna press and hold this for I think it's 10 seconds to power it off. You can hear it. There, okay, it's just turned off. So let's try this now. Let's see if this fits in a little better. That might have been the problem. Uh, this way you also get to see it, so that's a good thing. So let's press the power button and see what we get. Ooh, we're getting something. Ah, so that was it, it just wasn't reaching. All right, so let's wait for this thing to power up.
Uh, I'm going to choose Canada for this because that's where I am. You don't need to uh, really, really, uh, we'll just screw you up if you don't have the store settings set correctly, but for the purpose of this demonstration, I don't really care. Now, as I was saying, this is an Atom CPU, uh, and this particular Atom CPU is uh, a four core, a full four core, not two cores and two hyper threads, but two uh, full, uh, four full cores. And it is running at 1.4 gigahertz, uh, boostable, I believe, to 1.9, 1.92, I believe, something like that. I'll put the spec up on the screen so you can see it. And yeah, let's connect. For personal use, for the sake of this demonstration, next. I could join this machine to a domain, but I'm not going to. Uh, for the purpose of this conversation, but it's a full Windows 10 Pro, not Windows 10 Home, so it is domain joinable. I'm going to do an offline account to just get through this faster. And yes, I'll take the limited experience, thank you. And uh, username X, no password. I'll accept all of these. In case you're wondering why there's so many of these now, it's because uh, under uh, GDPR, the European Data Protection Law, uh, they have to make each question clear and give you options. So that's why it's no longer on one big screen. Not that you have to know that, it's just in case you're wondering why Microsoft would decide to make it such a laborious process, that's why. And now the unit's running. Um, you can feel a little bit of warmth on the back here, but not much. Uh, that's a fan intake, uh, and there are the fan exhausts. It's quite quiet, nothing you need to be uh, worried about, at least for the setup. Okay, so this is up. Let's take a quick tour. First thing, let's go to Task Manager and just see what it says here. Uh, I'll change the CPU to logical. There we go. So it, you can see four cores, four full cores, one socket. That's fine. And right now it's being pinned out. Let's see why it's being pinned out. Uh, so let's go to oh, let's go to here. And uh, I really hate groups, so I'm going to turn groups off. There we go. Now we can just sort it and see what's what. Oh, so it's just, okay, it's just finishing off its setup. So that's just fine. Uh, I don't care about uh, OneDrive for this case. I love OneDrive normally, but um, yeah, not, not keen on that uh, for this particular conversation. Now I noticed this says 32-bit. I thought this was a 64-bit atom, but perhaps it's 32. Let's just take a look. Okay, it's not telling me here. So let's go to about. It is 64-bit. Okay, great. So it's a 64-bit core uh, with the 64-bit uh, operating system, and that makes a big difference these days. So let's uh, move this down, and now let's go to memory. Yeah, so it's got four gig of RAM, which is just fine. I could have spent an extra, I think it's 60 or 70 dollars, sorry, 50 or 60 Canadian, so probably 35 US. Um, to get uh, to double up memory to eight gig, although not required for what I'm doing with it. And as you can see here, it's using the Intel integrated graphics uh, with, the, with the Atom. Okay, let's go take a quick look at device manager. And then we're gonna run some benchmarks. We'll let this finish uh, setting up first and we'll also run patches on it next. So let's see if there's anything interesting here. Bluetooth, uh, it's not telling me much there. Computer, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Sand disk, lovely. Okay, uh, that's a disk drives. Okay, 64-bit, that's happy. Display adapter, just Intel HD graphics. Let's see if there's anything interesting in there. Uh, I'll put up on the screen what it actually is. No, that's fine. It's just the uh, graphics that are built into the chip. Uh, firmware, that's fine. Don't care. Uh, don't care. Network adapter. Okay, so it's got uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Wonderful. There's the CPUs. What we need to do uh, before we do a benchmark is gets us to finish off the uh, setup. I'm just going to end task on it right now because I'm going to uh, do some other things. Uh, but uh, first thing we need to do is run patches, uh, including the firmware. So let's go to uh, home here and let's go to updates and let's go to check for updates. 
and it'll go to the cloud and it will get through its updates. While we're here, let's take a quick look at the drive. Yeah, okay, so it's using, uh, let's call it uh, a third of the drive. There's uh, 40 gig free, 39.3 gig free right now. So, but you could add more into that memory slot. So let's uh, let this thing run. I will patch it and we will be back in a few minutes. So while we're waiting uh, for these uh, drivers and other updates to install, let's see if we can find the firmware. So let's launch Microsoft Edge, Intel drivers, which is just support.intel.com, but let's do the search. There we go, there we go. And automatically update your drivers. This will include BIOSes and firmware. Download now. And again, that's because this is really uh, an Intel compute stick. Okay, agree, install. Well, I read it carefully. Let's accept that. Yep, let her up. Okay, so there we go. You can see that it uh, looks, it likes the BIOS that's on it. Uh, no need to change that, but it, it does like, uh, it does want to improve the Intel graphics driver. So let's give that a shot. We'll download it. Those updates took forever, and I mean like more than an hour. Let's restart. Okay, so we have the updates done, and it's rebooted, and things look happy. So now what I'm going to do is download our friend NovaBench, which is what I use for well, pretty much all of the testing, so let's just go to Nova Bench. Won't take very long to download. Okay, before running any benchmark, you really need to turn off any security software. So in this case, we're just running Defender. So I'll just double click on it and uh, turn off the uh, real-time checking. There we go, we turn off real-time protection. It's going to hate doing that. It's going to bark down at the bottom right-hand corner, at least it usually does. Let's get rid of that. And also turn off uh, your, there it is. And also turn off um, anything that's using any uh, memory or any of your CPU, including our good friend, Task Manager. So let's turn it off. Let's let it sit for a minute to finish off. Let's see if there's anything else running here. Uh, we don't need the icon and we'll turn off the tray so there so right now it's doing nothing this should be as quiet as the machine gets and let's click start test we'll run this three times i'm not going to make you sit here and watch i'll speed through it and then we'll discuss the results in just a moment wow is that weak look at that three frames a second in 1280 super bad so what that's telling me immediately is well, I'll be able to play all of the basic games, you know, Candy Crush and, and uh, you know, things like that. Anything uh, that's sort of, uh, you know, limited. Uh, you can clearly tell, yeah, that's just not going to run any real games. Okay, so what we've learned here is that... Uh, this is a very low-powered machine. This is brought to you by the Ministry of Duh. The only real surprise in here for me is how bad the, the drive is. The, uh, the, it's incredibly slow. But 
Uh, let, well, let's just move this over and we'll bring up a chart here and show you how it compares to other devices. And you'll see really it doesn't compare to anything because it's just so slow. That being said, you might be thinking to yourself, well, what can I do with it? Well, uh, a lot of things actually. So what you've got here is a completely standalone device uh, that is solid, st well, all but solid state. There is a fan in this one, although you can get ones without fans. Um, but so, so specifically, what can you do? Okay, well, I'm going to use this for digital signage. So I'm going to take this tiny little unit and I'm going to put it behind a monitor. Now, previously we had to cable things and it was a mess. I'm not going to do that anymore. Now I can just use this little unit, pop it behind a monitor and put it out in an elevator lobby uh, that's uh, and it, because I've got one of these screens mounted in the wall. Uh, so that's a great application. I can run PowerPoints on it to, uh, you know, show different presentations. I can also run different websites. So for instance, one of my customers, they have uh, a very interesting website with a lot of graphics and I'm just going to just roll and scroll around it. I'm just going to bring that up uh, if I use it for them and uh, I'll just leave it on that page and that page will be interesting all by itself. Now, uh, I could also connect this to any uh, other monitor really, and I can browse the internet with it, uh, so I can surf. I can also, and here's, this is kind of useful, um, with this little device, I could take it with me pretty much anywhere, including a hotel room, and I would be able to then take my work with me. Now, again, if you're, if you're a graphics designer, yeah, this is not for you, but if you're running Word and Excel, that type of stuff, that'll work just fine. You can check email, you can go social media, you can uh, download movies, you can watch uh, Amazon or, or stream, you can play the basic games if you just want to pass time. So in my case, I'm going to take this small device and I'm going to put it behind a monitor and that monitor is mounted in a wall in an elevator lobby and I am going to connect it to a VGA port. Now, I don't know if this is possible, but I'm sure going to find out. So I purchased a, a, an HDMI to a VGA adapter which I don't have here yet, hasn't arrived. And uh, I'm also going to need to use some gender benders to make this work, I think. And uh, so tune in, check the channel and see if uh, that works, if that's of something that, that's of interest to you. If you have any questions or concerns, please get a hold of us at www.urtech.ca. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.